Uh, Ryan, hi. Uh, the fielding was a bit of a letdown today. You guys uh, dropped uh, three to four crucial catches uh, at a very important juncture where, you know, you guys could have actually uh, turned the tables around because it was around 55 at 10 over mark. And then uh, dropping was seen, I think, two times and uh, the other fellow once and some catches here and there. So probably I think fielding was a bit of a concern today, I guess. Yeah, the again, it's spot on. Uh, you're right, 55 of the first 10 and they score 125 of the last 10. So it could have been different if we had taken our chances. Uh, you know, you don't give good players chances. And it's hurt us again. It's not the first time either. We dropped catches against these guys last time. We obviously lost at the last ball. Um, you know, it's something we're working on, but obviously it needs to be addressed even further. And, and uh, you know, if we want to give ourselves a chance to win games, it's the first thing you've got to cover. Ryan, um, you've had a fair share of uh, bad luck to the tournament. Um, is, is part of the plan perhaps just the mindset? Because you've gone through a tough period of a couple of weeks to get out of that rut. Um, mm -hmm. Is that something you've got to be discussing when you're practicing, when you're not playing on certain days? And what do you plan on? And would you make any party changes for the last game tomorrow? Yeah, it has been um, you know, tough. I think if you play professional cricket and you don't know you're signing up for that, then, then you're doing the wrong thing. Um, you know, and the emotion and the, your ability to come back from tough times is a prerequisite for playing this game. We've spoken about a bit about leaving the emotion and just trying to be focused on each game. Um, you know, things just haven't gone our way. And in terms of changes for next game, we struggled a bit with the combinations. I'm sure you've, you've seen that, uh, you know, being, not being able to pick a full contingent of overseas bowlers. So there's not too much we can do. Um, but, you know, every time it feels like one of the batters are doing something the other guys are, ha are having a struggling day. So then it also makes it difficult to leave anyone out because they've all got runs at certain stages and we feel like they can all get runs. Um, but yeah, maybe it is time to, to freshen up for the last game and, and you know start looking forward and, and see exactly what we do have in the sheds. And besides that, Graham, it's all be nice to shake up um, the third and fourth to qualify if you win tomorrow. That'd be nice to leave, leave a mark on that. <laughs> Yeah, I guess we've got a uh, you know an impact on how the, an influence on how the tournament um, ends. Certainly not the reason you play. We we weren't looking forward to playing the last game to try and knock someone out. Uh, but regardless of that, you know I've been part of teams that have won every group stage and, and won tournaments, and teams that have lost every group stage and you know walked away without a win. But the important thing for the players is that they keep putting in every day, and tomorrow is just one more chance. Um, you know we we still want to be a proud team. We still want to look forward and. Tomorrow's one last chance to, to get a one on the ball before we go home. Uh, you've been part of uh, two, two winning KKR sides, I guess, if I'm not wrong, uh, when you were playing for Kolkata Knight Riders. So do you share some sort of your insights and that mentality, you know, how to get that winning momentum into the boys, or you know, your experience from those days where you know, initially KKR wasn't really performing well, but then you guys won two back-to-back uh, two -back, uh, seasons. So you know, do you guys have that conversation with people? Not directly, certainly not in, in that sense. Uh, you know, I don't think anyone's interested in, in what I did seven, eight years ago, and that, that's not sort of the way you go about talking to players. But I know Abby's a big advocate of you know, having fights, and, and some guys show it in different ways. Uh, we certainly have spoke about having more fights and, and being more proud of our performances as individuals. You know, there's a lot of really good cricketers there, a lot of good franchise cricketers, um, and we, we're still working out how to get the best out of them. I uh, unfortunately uh, the loss, but you have played the uh, league cricket all over the world. In, in such situations, how do you keep the morale of the players? Are is it more like one-to-one -one discussions with them, or it's like a group discussion, like after so many losses? It's a bit of both. Uh, you know, you want ideally you want the guys driving the conversations and, and coming to you. Um, there's certainly no lack of effort, and, and guys are wanting to do well. And look, no one's laughing and joking. The guys are disappointed, obviously. Um, but yeah, that especially in franchise cricket where you come together for very short periods of time, that drive has to come internally, and we can only facilitate that. But yes, of course, we're talking to the players and, and you know making sure that they're still uh, focused on the task and trying to get better, trying to put a bean in the jar every time we train and, and every time we get together. Also, in franchise cricket, the amount of money is being involved. Is the pressure more because you played international also and franchise cricket also? Probably. Yes, you'd have to ask the players that. But yeah, I mean, uh, you know, some guys are doing the job on 
10 grand and, and other guys on a lot more. So I don't know how that weighs on them individually. But again, you know, these guys have played a lot of franchise cricket. They know the expectations. We know what we want from the team and, and we just try our best to help them deliver that.